Skål. And welcome back to episode two of Skarholt, or the the region of Skarholt, as it's as the name is. Um, today we're going to be looking at constructing something which sort of is related to, I guess, one of the hallmarks of, of Viking society, um, and that is uh, houseboats to house the Viking uh, longships, which was famous for their sort of. Um, engineering ingenuity in the fact that they were seaworthy but could also but were also small and nimble enough to be able to sort of go down uh, small rivers and basically uh, surprise the enemy because uh, they weren't expecting such these sort of seafaring ships to be going down the center of a, of a river whereas most ships had to were too big to do that these ones could um, so basically, you would have seen before, I actually used a, a boat asset to create the roof of uh, this boat house. And what allowed me to do that was basically the procedural objects mod, which means I can basically flip assets as opposed to just rotating them. Um, but you notice also that the bottom wasn't, the bottom uh, faces weren't textured, so I actually was able to also stitch that up by basically editing in real time the vertices of um, the object. So basically, procedural objects lets you edit each individual uh, vertice, which is incredibly powerful um, for City Skylines. It's essentially being able to basically do re real time uh, 3D modeling in, in a sense, which is really cool. Um, and you can see I use it just there just to sort of um, cut off the the end of the the boat house where basically the entrance is because I didn't really I couldn't have that point because I needed for the doors to be able to open, um, so that was really cool. And then again, um, I'm actually using uh, the log and then procedural objects to rotate it vertically, so that I can actually use make these as nice, nice little sort of support pillars um, that sort of hold up on the side there, and then I can basically copy these across um, to the other side, which is which is really good. And then you'll see me come back and put those um, logs on the roof, just, just as I do with all the other buildings. There's like a nice little support um, beam for that area as well. So we've also got a name for this town now, which is going to be uh, Fal Falhom. Um, so that'll be the name of this town, and I'll be doing about three or four towns, or, or three other small towns. Um, within the Skarhold region because Skarhold is going to be the region that we're dealing with as well um, And I might even do up a map of it I sort of was playing around with it on Photoshop and doing sort of a more fantasy looking map um, So you might see that later on. Uh, I might tweet put it on show it on the next um, The next uh, episode maybe depending on how we go um, So look forward to that uh, And then here I'm using these um, they're actually lifeguard um, or life rings, but they sort of look a little bit like the colors of some of the, the, the Viking shields So I'm kind of using them as the side shields that you often see as decoration on the side of the buildings as well um, And for some of the shields that will be on the chips as well. So basically this you can see that boat there um, well That boat was actually the same asset as the roof and I've just been able to basically scale it down and stretch it out so this asset actually turns out to be quite a versatile asset because I'm able to do a lot of different things with it um, and obviously the procedural objects, uh, objects mod makes that so easy to do which is really cool um, and I'll actually make like a proper ship later on in the episode as well that's actually on the water uh, and finished and ready to sort of be used as well um, you can see there I just quickly added in the second one um, It's m very much most of the same just copying and pasting what I've done and plopping it on the side there And I end up doing three in total for now um, I'll probably add I might add uh, more later on as like the town progresses But for now, I think three is a good amount. Um, there would definitely be more but just at this point um, We're only gonna go with three and then I'll add a small little house um, next to these which is kind of going to be the person who's in charge of these boats and construction of the boats and stuff like that so he'll be kind of having like a permanent residence residence there uh, here we're just um, bringing in the uh, sea just a little bit because it was a bit too far away um, so the, the long ship or sorry the long houses or the boat houses sorry um, we're actually a little bit further away from the water, so 
um, I had to sort of, but I didn't want to make it too far away, so I sort of brought in that coast a little bit. Um, and basically, they would each uh, boat house would store only one uh, long boat, uh, and basically they would be used to store these these boats um, throughout the winter when they couldn't uh, couldn't go out and sail because of obviously like um, with the harsh climate sometimes. Uh, the lakes were, or some some areas of the lakes were frozen, and they couldn't really get around that. So obviously, long boats don't really fare too well in um, the sort of icy waters. So for most of winter, they'd be sort of locked up and, and kept safe from the elements. And then when 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 summer came around, they'd probably take them out and use them to go on their raids and then expeditions and probably fishing as well. Um, so that's predominantly what these boat houses were used for. Uh, and then here. I'm just adding in some sort of like workbenches where you, they might do like maintenance or repairs on some of the boats that they needed to or sort of building it and then sort of adding any additions that they, they need to see fit. Uh, and then here we're doing, putting in the first sort of uh, dock area. So this is where you put a dock down and we actually make one of the um, the boats sort of floating on the water. Again using the same um, boat uh object and then using a variety of um, like logs for like the masts and then I actually use this like cylinder it's like a, a cylinder concrete pipe but if you sort of scale it down a bit and, and extend it it looks a little bit like a rolled up sail so I sort of use that as a rolled up sail and then I actually come back later and, and get some more logs but make them even thinner so that I can sort of make them look a little bit like uh, the ropes that would sort of tie up the mask and, and and the ropes that they would release when they were sort of um, dropping the mask or setting the mask up so they could go sailing out on the water and then just adding some, some more little sort of cargo details because obviously this town's going to be the, the main trade hub of this area so they're obviously going to be very very busy in terms of their trading they're going to have a lot of stock that they're sort of moving from uh, the boats up, up to the land and then further up to the actual to the uh, development of the town um, and then here we're just sort of adding, using the same technique I did with the building, which is adding these sort of, they're basically like um, dock tires that the boats kind of rest up against so they don't damage the actual dock, but they sort of work well in terms of looking like from a distance, like sort of the Viking shields that they would hang over over the, um, the side of the ship in preparation to sort of jump out and sort of begin their raid, um, which is quite useful. They can just pretty much get up and out of the boat, grab all their stuff and be on the land very quickly as well. Um, so that was really cool. Uh, and then here we're coming up to the second part which is creating uh, the mead hall. So basically this is another large building and this is kind of like the main central sort of, I guess, social area that sort of, I guess, Viking uh, society would have and they usually use these to sort of have feasts and celebrate um, you know, successful raids and things like that. And it usually involved most of the people within the town. And these were quite quite large buildings. Which just They pretty much just had one single room, which was kind of like the, the big mess hall, um, usually with a very long table that everyone could sit at and they'd obviously have a lot to drink. Um, so the other thing is that out the, the front of this meat hall is going to be the main sort of market area as well. So because we've got the meat hall here, which is like the centre of the sort of social aspect of this town I thought it'd be best to also put in uh, the marketplace around this area so we do a little bit of that off camera for this episode but on a, on a future episode uh, I sort of I might even put a bit more uh, focus into putting more details into the marketplace and expanding it a little bit um, so this area is going to be kind of open but most of the town will be very compact because um, that's kind of how the towns were, were sort of cr- divvied up they didn't really have a huge amount of land to sort of give up so everything was very tightly compact and sort of close together as well so this will be one of the few sort of very open areas that you'll see um within this this uh settlement as well again using those nice logs to just put in that nice sort of uh support beam effect and then adding in uh the the roofing decals uh for this for the different slats of the roof um, I actually found a slightly bigger version of this de- decal, which is a 2x2 two two decal. Um, currently the one I'm using is only a 1x2, so that way I can just sort of save a little bit of room on props and um, and things like that. And it'll be just making this process a lot easier 
to sort of well, the, the workflow a lot quicker as well and basically copying half as many uh, assets to uh, to different buildings when, when I need to uh, and again we just sort of setting up the the, lot, sort of the final touches of the actual like main structure and then we'll come back and start detailing it and adding some of the different areas adding the supplies so where they keep all the food and then the meat and all that sort of thing and and where it's made as well so you'll see that coming up in a, in a sec once we saw that this this rooftop here uh, and I've, I can't remember if I put, put a yeah I did put a chimney as well I do end up putting a chimney because obviously they're going to have a, quite a big fireplace to keep every, everyone warm and, and sort of cook the food as well so they're going to need a, a place to let all that, that fire out or sort of not fire but you know smoke and, and things like that um, here I sort of add in a like extra part of the roof which is going to be like a kind of like a veranda that sort of overhangs the entrance here to add a bit of shelter um, but also because uh, just gives them a bit more room to like house supplies and things like that um, so I'll actually pull this out and make like a small little veranda that kind of goes around the front half of the uh, the building here as you can see that's what I'm doing just sort of extending this a bit further uh, and then sort of texturing it up so that uh, it's just not the black asphalt and then we come back and actually put in um, similar to what I did with the the boat houses which was putting in like those support beams that sort of come up from the ground and they hold hold up this sort of surrounding um, sort of veranda thing uh, as well uh, and then here I'm just trying to sort of uh, fine tune the length of these uh, roofs because I didn't want the, t the very top section of the roofs to go all the way to the edge of the lower half so I'm just trying to figure out uh, based on where I made that front sort of veranda area where the, the best place to end it is basically to sort of avoid the, the gaps here but you can still see there's a, a slight gap because of the height difference so I actually come back and use some fences to um, just touch up and sort of cap off uh, sort of close off that little gap that you can see um, there on the roof and then here we are put adding in the first of our support beams put, put a couple across each and then I'll come back and actually make like a sort of wooden decking um, using the same uh, wooden asset that I use for like some of the entrances to the other buildings and like the main pathways and basically what there are is like a like a, a pile of um of planks but if you sink them into the ground they look a lot like like wooden flooring or wooden sort of uh deck decking i suppose which is um which is really useful it's going to be quite a versatile asset to have in this particular build because i'm going to be using a lot of wooden uh type architecture uh quite often because obviously you know they, they were mostly uh, wooden and stone uh you know supplies for for these buildings and things like that um, it was a little tricky to sort of match all these up, just trying to sort of, there's a lot of decals here, so trying to select the right one was a little bit tricky because I kept getting either a different one or, or like a wall that I'd already placed there. So it's a little bit of trying to fight and figure out which decal is, is where it is and where I needed to to have it as well. Um, and you can see here, I just put down that uh, decking sort of flooring and then I'm sort of starting to add in some smaller details and um, crates and stuff like that where they're going to like I said store store food store meat and any other sort of maybe general purpose sort of supplies that they might need um, in within this sort of central area as well so we're just adding in some details of the texture here just trying to figure out like a nice texture that's going to sort of work too well um, I tried some sort of like fertile land but it didn't really work and I was trying to find like a Kind of like a dirt sort of grass texture, so I sort of use a bit of a combination of things here. Um, adding in these sort of secondary shelters, which what I could imagine would be where they might sort of another area to like help make, uh, I guess, meat or maybe some extra storage place and just sort of ensuring that it's safe from the elements and things like that. And then we're sort of just adding in uh, all these nice texturing and mud, sort of grungy mud uh, textures to the sort of main pathway that people take. And I'll be doing this a lot everywhere, which is adding these really muddy sort of um, textures uh, because it's a very wet climate as I mentioned before um, so I'll be doing that quite a bit into here adding in uh, these chimneys and the great thing about these um, smoke uh, particles is that you can actually raise them off the ground which is really good so I can actually make it look like uh, the smoke's properly coming out of the chimney and then sort of adjust the height uh, in a way that sort of works out well um, obviously Trying to select it can be a little tricky once you place it in here, but you can see I've actually got it and 
I just sort of the, the good thing about it is it adds um, it helps add a sense that this is all kind of working um, because I'm sort of bending how city skylines work I'm trying to um, make up for that and trying to make it look as, as lively as possible because right now we don't really see any people around because the roads are sunken um, and obviously it's, there's not going to be any vehicles or anything um, I'll have to play around with like paths and see if I can get some paths going so I can get people walking around because um, even though you've got the sidewalks on the road because they're lowered underneath the ground it doesn't quite work um, you do get people popping up from time to time when they're heading to like the houses but that's literally the only time you ever really ever really see them um, but here, just adding some boat supplies for the last part, and then adding some more decals and muddy texture to uh, the sort of shorefront. But we're pretty much done for this episode. Um, you'll see some shots of the finished product, um, and a few other additions that I added in here, and and um, houses. And um, yeah, until next time, may your travels see you well.